let's head back to Liz Clayman, who will give us a glimpse into the Davos billionaires elite and their outlook for the global economy. Liz. Along with the central bankers who are here in Davos and, of course, the world leaders are the world's billionaires. Jeff Green, who, of course, is from America. I spoke with him earlier today and asked him, where do you see the hottest areas of growth and where would you put your investments now? Here's what he said. Technology and robotics, artificial intelligence, they're going to bring health care, education. They're going to democratize. They're going to bring it to people who otherwise wouldn't have had it. So I think it'll be ultimately the great equalizer, but in the short term, it's going to be the very, very big and scary disruptor. Jeff Green also telling us that Apple was his best trade of 2014. Now, from American billionaires to Russian billionaires, we've got Oleg Deripaska. He is the chief of Rusol, which is the world's largest aluminum company. Welcome and thank you for coming on Fox Business. You. Uh, boy, you employ lots of people all over the world. I just want to give people some color here. You just came from an Ebola meeting because you're the largest employer in Guinea and you're building a hospital. Ebola, how serious a threat is it, do you believe? was very serious and we've been very lucky you know this time we've been very lucky and that was one of the subject of the meeting you know how to prepare ourselves for the next case which will definitely happen people are talking about ebola they're talking about terrorism but they're also talking about western tensions with your country russia how are the sanctions affecting you and your company no, we're not directly affected but of course because of pressure on russia and uh, oil slump you know it would be a significant pressure on Russian economy and will be affected. We had VTB Bank's chief uh, Andrei Kostin on day one of Davos and he said, you know, Ukrainian business people and Russian business people actually get along. It's the politicians that don't. Have you had an opportunity to talk to President Putin, Vladimir Putin, about, <laughs> see he's starting to smile, about lessening the tension and maybe coming together with the West once again? Uh, but Kostin was absolutely right, and you can see on his event you know, yesterday, you know, there was a lot of Ukrainian businessmen, and we all discussed you know, what would be the best way. And it seems the best way is to start, to start talking about economy. Of course, we need to stop this tragedy in eastern Ukraine, but uh, it, you know, I think the both sides very close. It's just a matter of uh, intensity of the action. And I think from a uh, you know, political point of view, I'm not sure that... Uh, in the West, in a proper, there is a proper understanding of what Russia wants and what Russia takes as an action already. And there was the latest initiatives from Russian side, which wasn't hurt. And, and, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's very tough because no one really knows where is Ukraine is. You know? <laughs> for many people, it's, uh, it's uh, new discoveries. But for us, it's, uh, you know, as I said, it's a tragedy. You know that 70% Ukrainian has relatives in Russia, 40% Russian has relatives in Ukraine. It's not something which, uh, you know, over a month. And, uh, you know, we need to stop it as soon as possible. And then, you know, we need to start in a normal, you know, relation. And I think, I think, I think West, yes, it's, it's, it's incentive. But don't forget, the sanction hit, you know, not politician. Sanction hit middle class in Russia private business and I don't think you know these people you know somehow engage you know, in anything with you know what's happening in Ukraine and I, and I think it's uh, it's not a, it's not a good thing you know to put pressure on people who work hard you know to to help economy grow well Look, you're lucky that aluminum happens to be denominated in US dollars so it's not directly affecting you at the moment but how is your business doing? I mean, let's talk about the trend in the auto industry now. The Ford F-150 uses aluminum. Are you part of that trend? Of course, you know, we produce material in our, and you know, we produce it rather cheap. If you look at LME, you know, aluminum on the, on the price, you know, has a price which was in the mid 90s. You know, it's very affordable and you know, we develop you know, a lot of new alloys with our partners and with a lot of R&D which was spent and now it could be used you know, in anywhere. And that's why growth you know, of, in consumption you know, last year was 7%. It wouldn't be the you know, same you know, this year. And there is more and more application. We develop new alloys you know, for transportation sector for infrastructure, you know, there would be more application and packaging and uh, it's recyclable, as you know, it's lightweight, has the same, now we have alloys which has the same conductivity, there would be more copper substitutions and more important, more important, it's very cheap. And it's strong and safe, you say? Yeah, it's new alloys, you know, it's all alloys material, you know, and you can use it in airplanes and you will better, you know, use them more in uh, infrastructure soon and it's just coming.
It's great to have you. We'll be watching Rusal and, of course, the relationships with the West. I, I, I wish that they'd hear from business people versus just the politicians, and maybe we'd get something done. Oleg Deripaska, thank you very much. Thank you. And we should mention Rusal was Russia's best performing stock in 2014. We'll be watching it in 2015. Back to you in New York.